Good morning everyone. So today I am opening my little package from Choosing Keeping. It's um, going to be the Japanese Seasons watercolour set um, and this one is their winter set so they do have the other seasons and I just love the little birds that um, they stick on the outside. They're so pretty. So um, yes let's just see if we can get in here there we go so I do quite often buy little bits and pieces from choosing keeping it has mainly been their um, Japanese watercolours which are slightly different numbers to the Kuritaki. Look there's a little magazine here that they've sent through with their Christmas gifts in. They do have unusual things so just a quick flip through They're based in London, um, in the UK, so it's quite nice they put that little Christmas catalogue in. So onto our paint. It's always such a shame that you have to rip this lovely, beautiful bird. Um, I will use my craft knife here to get in. And then we've got this rather lovely box of Japanese watercolours. The boxes of themselves are really stunning. I mean, just look at the detail on that box. So we've got a card to swatch out the colours with and they've all got their Japanese names and the numbers of the paints. I'll put a link to this set. You can see the numbers for these ones are always on the, on the back. And they won't match the Kuritaki, the Gansai Tambi numbers, they are different. So, let's get my colour diary. I've already listed the paints out. Um, I think I've shown this several times now. Um, this is where I am keeping track of everything that I own. So we're going to swatch them out onto my, or rather into my painter's diary, but I'm also going to pop them onto the card, the watercolour card that came with the, with the set. And I will try and tell you about the colours as we go along. Here we go, this is our first colour which is called Ochiba Cha, Cha being tea, and it means fallen leaves tea, and it's number 50. So I will do these quite saturated and then add some water so that we can see what they might look like a little bit more watered down. Our next colour is Honai, or True Indigo. And that's number 139. 
And then we have Fuji Murasaki, which is a, they call it a, a royal purple named after the spectacular wisteria. That's number 53. It's a gorgeous royal purple there, isn't it? Moving on, we have number 208, which is Amiro or Flax. Of course, I might be pronouncing these Japanese names wrong, but I'm doing my best, as they say. Then we have number 12, Gofun. Gofun? Gofun? which is a white, but it is actually the um, traditional white pigment made from shells. Shells that have been crushed. Number 44, Gunroku, mixed green. Traditionally, this pigment is made up of a mixture of azurite and malachite. That is very gem like, very lovely. Number eleven is Kuro or black. Number 220 is Ruriiro, Ruriiro, Lapis Lazuli, Lapis Lazuli Blue. And then number 204 is Mizuiro. Light blue, literally, it means water colour, water colour. Mm. Then we have number 64, which is a pearlescent blue called Parueo, Parueo, doing my best here for you. <laughs> I wish I knew how to pronounce them. Then we've got number 221, Tokiwairo, Evergreen. Um, in traditional Japanese, it refers to the longevity and unchanging nature of evergreen leaves, which is seen as good luck in Edo period Japan. This information, by the way, I've taken from um, Choosing Keeping's uh, website. Verdigris, ancient verdigris, Kodai Rokusho. Green is traditionally associated in, J in Japan with matcha tea and the ever important tea ceremony. 222 is Aoi Iro, named after the light purple mallow flower, um, traditionally used in Japanese medicines. And then number 25, Shinsha, is Cinnabar. And I've made a mess. So I will come back and sort that out in a moment. I'm going to just, with a clean, well, dry cloth, I'm going to take that paint away. 
and I will come back and repaint over the top in a moment. Moving on to number 22, Kogichar, which means charred tea. And then number 23, Jinnezu, or Ginnezu, Jinnezu, light grey. Literally, it means silver mouse. Then we've got Kinodoro, Kinodoro, golden ochre. Followed by number two, which is just ochre, Udo, which is perhaps the oldest pigment found globally in prehistoric cave pa paintings. Synthetic alternatives to the natural pigment are more frequently used today, as in this instance. Number 216 is Zujiro Ivory. And our last one, number 60, is Jin, or Gin, Silver. It's looking like a rather lovely palette. Let's just fix our light purple. So there we have it. I'll bring that up for you to have a better look at. They're all rather lovely. So it'll be nice to, oh, look at that mixed green. There's our black. I like the greens in this winter set actually and that pearlescent blue might be lovely for snow together with the light grey maybe they are I like the ochres as well they are beautiful I'm really happy with that as a winter set At the moment I'm still doing lots of autumn things but um, I just thought it'd be nice to get this ready for, for winter. So let's do a bit of mixing. So we'll take our lapis lazuli. And we will add a little bit of, what one are we adding? Charred tea. So that gives us a much deeper brown. Mm. A bit more lapis lazuli or lapis lazuli, depending on how you want to say it, with the ochre. And that gives us a much more olivey brown, uh, green, sorry, olivey green. I want to see if I can possibly get some autumn colours out of this set 
just to play devil's advocate. So that was our cinema with the ochre. Mm. You see, these mixes are coming out and looking fairly autumny, to be fair. So we'll have some of the light blue. with the cinnabar. Ooh. Now that's a real berry colour. Mm. So let's go with our charred tea again and the ochre. really deepened that ochre up but yeah these are looking like quite nice autumn colours at the minute so now we are going to take the mixed green and a bit of the black Ooh. Maybe a little bit perylene green like. And then the mixed green. With. The golden ochre. Oh that's stunning. I like that green. Yes, these the mixes are coming out quite autumny. Right, light blue. And that one is our light purple. Ooh. That's very pretty. So now a little bit of cinnabar. With the ivory. Mmm. I really like these mixes as well. I mean, obviously I'm not doing these mixes in a orderly fashion. I'm just playing. So next we have got our true indigo and we're going to mix that with the silver. And that gives us a stunning grey. Changing my palette now as I run out of space. What shall we do? We will go back to our lapis lazuli. And we will mix that with flat. Ooh. And then cinnabar. With 
evergreen. Oh, now that is a real ready brown. That goes quite nicely with that top row of colours, which could very well be autumny colours. So, it's looking like this is going to be a very versatile. Versatile set. So I think that was the Wisteria and the Lapis Lazuli. And then space for one more. So we will go with the Fallen Leaves Tea. And the ivory. Oh, I like that colour too. Wow. Gosh, what a lovely set. Let me bring those up for you to just see some of those mixes and Actually, I think you could adjust those colours and they would still work for autumn. So although it's a winter set, I think some of those mixes would work. So there we go. That's the beautiful box from Choosing Keeping.